Eagle Bay. We got a site plan review and we have a final statement to adopt or talk about. Um, I think it's just, to, we were just here tonight to talk about the adoption of the finding statement. And then once that was done, we would come back with our consultants and go through the site plan uh, with you. So I think it's just the finding statement on for tonight, Dave. Is that your understanding? Uh, yes, that's true. And uh, the site plan is uh, would be uh, the next issue to next month. All right, a couple of uh, I think a couple of issues have popped up that we'd like to to address. Uh, let's go back over to mitigations and finding on page sixteen on G two about midway. There's a sentence says this traffic signal will be installed prior to the issuance of the third residential building seal of certificate of occupancy issued for the project. I don't want to go on beyond that. It was my uh, impression and talking with some of the other members of the planning board that we were going to have that after the second building. So that's okay. one of the things we'd like to address. Okay. Um, this, if I, if, I, if I may just have like a minute to just go sure. through the history, I appreciate it. Thank you. We got more. So, so this, um, this FES obviously was adopted back in, in September. And the delay in adopting the finding statement, which we lead to the additional state delays, arose because of this issue from the PIPC. Um, and um, if uh, you said you had a couple of issues, and I know we had a special workshop to discuss this, and I'm not necessarily uh, opposed to, you have a draft finding statement in front of you, it has a draft watermark. If the only issue left is changing the word, you know, second uh, CO, uh, or third CO back to second, I think that we would probably be okay um, adopting subject to that, but I'd want to hear what the other issues are first. I was going to read the afternoon alert. And Gene, if I could just butt it, not butt in here, but give one comment, and maybe this is where the confusion was over that one section. So when they say it'll be after this, after the second building, it's kind of the same thing because you're not going to be able to open the third building until the traffic light is installed because it's for the CO. So the traffic light would be installed after the second building is open, but it would be installed before the third. So I think it's just a matter of semantics with the CO versus the building permit. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that comment because I actually thought to myself, well, before the third also could mean before the second. I mean, there's not, you know, um, and, and you're not going to give it to us. So, um, um, and that could be a map note that's addressed in site plan. Yeah, but I think that's probably where the, some of the confusion came. In Thank you for the second building, third building. I refer to you. All right, the next, uh, the next question that arose was G6. Uh, let me read it. The project sponsor will conduct the post implementation post-construction monitoring study within six months of substantial completion and occupancy of the project to identify actual traffic volumes or other potential improvements, including possible signalization of the Tompkins Avenue, Hudson Drive, site access, Beach Road, CSX Railroad, overpass, intersection, and speed study along Tompkins Avenue. So that kind of... Uh, it, do, it doesn't match G2. So uh, talking to uh, planner and some other people, uh, other, again, other members, we'd like to uh, modify that to state this. The project sponsor will conduct a post-implementation slash post-construction monitoring study within six months of substantial completion and occupancy of the project to identify actual traffic volumes. At that point, we'd like to remove 
the rest of that sentence. And add, and any required improvements to mitigate project impacts. I'd have to look at that. Um, again, um, I, 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 Amy, oh, 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 I think that that entire uh, sent, sentence was centered on Tompkins and 9W. I don't know how Beach Road got involved with that. This says nothing. This has, this has got to do with, it says Tompkins Avenue, Hudson Drive, side access, Beach Road, CSX Railroad, over this. Yeah, no. That, that's, you think the traffic light is the traffic light, and that was going to take care of that. I know that, but this is already, this is in here. Well, I was thinking. Hold on, I'm, I'm searching the word traffic or beach road. I'm on page 17. Thank you, Mary. But You're I'll, welcome. I'll confirm with Dave, Jean, I believe this whole section can be taken out because the applicant, as we just discussed, is going to install that traffic light. He's, he basically gave up, said, look, I'm not going to do a study. I'm just going to install the, the improvements as shown. And that's what we just spoke about uh, between buildings two and three. Correct right. me if I'm wrong, Dave, but I think that's... No, no, you're, you're Dave, right. Dave. Absolutely. Dave, was it your was it your recollection that that intersection was properly supposed to be Tompkins and 9W? Yeah. Based on we, the DEIS? We changed it. We agreed to do the traffic light at the discussion, and then the second part of, I'll say, traffic had to do with Tompkins and 9W uh, redoing the count after the pro project was, uh, you know, three quarters full or whatever. That that's what we discussed. I don't know how it got. So so maybe that that intersection reference just needs to be changed back. That's to what I think because that's what we had agreed to. I mean, once we do the traffic light, why would we do a study? Because we know it's. Yeah, and this be. says after the project, so. Yeah, that's Tompkins and 9W. That's what we were okay. talking about. Can we all agree, though, that if these are like little nits and typos, that there's a draft watermark on this? We actually changed the finding statement, I think, during a special workshop a couple of weeks ago, literally on the fly. I could do it right now on my machine, and we could adopt this subject to those two changes. Well, well, this change is, is really correction of, of what is essentially a, a typo or misidentification. Right. Right. Okay. And then, so, oh, is is the traffic light going to be at the CSX underpass on Beach, Tompkins, and Hudson? Or, I mean, you just said you're going to put the traffic light up, regardless yeah. of the study, beach. right? Beach and Beach and uh, Beach, Tompkins, and and uh, Hudson. And Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's going. That light's going up, and then. And after project study, we'll decide whether a light goes up at Tompkins and 9W? Correct. That was That's what the traffic report said. And when we submit the site plans, you'll see the traffic light layout. And we have comments from the county already on that. Okay. Yes, that was the intent. Okay, okay. Max, how do you want to leave this? Uh, I, I think just like, just like we said, so I think the board needs to to discuss whether or not they want uh, G2 to change to um, before the building permit of building three or before the CO of building two. Uh, and, and the applicant has to identify whether they agree to that, which I think she's waiting to hear the rest of your comments. Well, this one G6 seems to be just a correction of, of a misidentification where this provision is referring to Tompkins and 9W, not Tompkins and Beach slash it's Hudson. Gonna be, it's going to have to be modified and addressed. Just need to change right. the intersection of Tompkins Avenue with Beach Road and Hudson Drive to the intersection of Tompkins with Route 9W. That's the only change that needs to be made. Right. And I believe, and Max and Steve, you know, chime in if you think I'm wrong, I, I think those minor changes can be you know, we can adopt this finding statement subject to making those mo minor modifications and move on. So I far, I don't have any, yeah. any issues what? with okay. with changing okay. the, the finding statement as we've discussed so far. Thank you. I, I have the rest, how does the rest of the planning board feel? Are there any comments? I have a question. It's just about the light 
potential light at Tompkins and 9W. In, in, in prior meetings, when we talked about it, it was going to be determined by the state whether we needed a light. Who's determining it now? State. They okay. took the state road, and it's a state uh, authority. Okay. Yeah. They have to determine whether it meets the warrants. What this would require, Eric, is that the applicant would have to provide the data to the state in order to determine if there could even be a, a traffic light there. And, and then who pays for it, the applicant or the town or the state? This has the applicant paying for that study. And the, the applicant's going to put money in escrow for that if it has to happen. That was the intent, yes. Okay. Study, yes. Thank you. So the, the rest of the board is comfortable with us changing the uh, actual location on G6? Yeah, I am. Yes. Let me just go back to G2. Yes. Is, there any, is there any comment from the board? That's from the uh, third to the second residential CO? I'm so, well, um, well, from my, my, my point... I, I had a, I'm sorry. a little interruption. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, could you repeat that? I was going to say, I don't have an issue if it relates to the way it was presented that um, after the second building is constructed, it's automatically going to go to uh, the, the light being installed. Um, that's fine. I, I think that just the way the verbiage was a little confusing. So I have no issue leave, leaving the third. It's fine as long as that's what's going to happen. Do, do we have to put a time frame that the light has to be installed with within? And when the, would it depend on when the building is completed? Yeah, well, what, right. So is it going to be 60 days installed in 60 days? Is it a year? The time, the, time, the time frame is based upon the CO. So right. no CO can be issued for the third building until that light until is that installed. Now, yeah, if they good. decide not to build for six years between building two and three, then that's what it would be. Because it's not until building three is occupied that you're going to need that. Well, you don't even need the light if the whole thing is occupied, but that's what the, they've agreed to. So there's not a specific six months. It's just prior to the issuance of seal for the third building. So they're going to be half occupied, have to install this light, and then they can build the, the, the remaining two buildings. I'm, I'm catching it wrong. I mean, I'm catching that they're going to get after the traffic light seal will be installed prior to the issuance of the third CO. I just said, I just thought we're going back to the second. No, the, at the job. This, again, this is where the explanation, and you can talk to the applicant, but the way it was set up is building one and two would be occupied, open and occupied. They would install the light, and then they would be allowed to occupy the third building. So it was basically no. midway through the project that they could do it. So it's the same, it's the same thing. Play on yeah. words. Right, let me just move on to something else here. It was, this was brought up by one of, uh, I think, this was one of your questions, Mark. Uh, let me see my notes. The G7? Yeah, you had, you, and this is probably for John, and I spoke to John about this earlier. On yeah. I 9, you were talking about the uh, influence of the project flow, it's got to do with the sewage. Yeah. Page 21. Yeah. It's on page 21. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Uh, yeah, we have a statement saying there's sufficient capacity at the treatment plant to handle the, the additional sewage flow. I mean, is that from a report or a study that was done by the sewer department or, or the treatment plant? Or is that just a, a statement from whoever's running the plant now? I mean, was there a, a capacity analysis done on the plant? Basically, what we did is we took your flow numbers, your treatment numbers every day, and based it on what you're approved for by the state. And then we uh, also did the study, which shows the areas that were of concern that we think we can eliminate some inflow. And that was all boxed up into uh, the report that was uh, in the EIS, right. and we also are, uh, have just very recently 
uh, discussed uh, things with the town board as far as uh, sewer improvements, sewer fees, and uh, you know that's moving on also. So that would be something for the site plan. But uh, okay, so that you, you, you have to remember one thing: it doesn't matter what Stony Point says; it has to go to the Rockland County Health Department. So they are actually the final approval, and it has to. The application to the health department has to be signed by the town engineer. So this is all stuff that uh, has to be proved when we go for that first, you know, signature of the map. And then it has to be backed up when we go for the CFOs. So that's a permit that we have to qualify for, just like the water. Okay. Now, you said this is signed off on by the county. Yeah, it's a permit to the county, just like the water. It's uh, the, the water is Suez. We we right. prepare everything. We're going to uh, do the improvement maps. We give it to Suez. Suez submits it to the county, and the county approves it after they review. Same thing with the sewer. We design the sewer. We design these improvement areas that we're we're proposing to do, and 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 if there's issues. Uh, that'll come up with the county, but the person who signs the application to the county is actually a town engineer. So it's, there's checks and balances in this uh, long before the map gets signed. Well, we've been talking about the sewer since the beginning. I think we, we did the study Dave described, and my clients agreed to pay for offsite improvements to minimize any impact from the um, you know additional sewage. I just, and, uh, I just want to make sure that the plant has the capacity to do it. So I know, you know Mark, the plant runs pretty close to capacity as is. So what we're doing, from what I understand, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, because I got a little drainage lesson today, but what we're doing is sure, we did a study and we've identified areas where there are, you know, breakdowns in the pipes and whatnot. And when you get a heavy rain, you get an infiltration of stormwater. Sometimes that brings that plant closer to capacity. If we go in there and we correct and we we solve those problems and we, you know, correct that that piping and put in new piping, that will actually increase your capacity during during a storm event. So we are actually, uh, you know, we've agreed voluntarily to go in and do that. Okay, and, and Mark, just to confirm, your normal everyday flow. You're not even, you're not close to capacity. Um, it's only during heavy storm events that you have issues. Uh, the town actually tried to get increased capacity um, because there's other issues with joint regional, uh, and the DEC wouldn't even allow it because we weren't we weren't at eighty percent capacity. So under normal conditions, there's plenty of capacity at the plant as of right now. Okay, and, and how many gallons? How many gallons a day? Is normal capacity. And how many I, gallons is? You're, you're, I believe the plant's rated for one MGD. I believe. Correct. Your plant, the sewer treatment plant, is, is currently rated for one million gallons per day. Your average flow are around eight hundred, a little less than eight hundred thousand gallons per day. Except again, heavy rain events, um, Hudson River, where it flows over Beach Road. That's when you have the infiltration and inflow, as every community does. Where your plant then is now treating basically stormwater. So to alleviate that, the applicant has um, identified and worked with our office and the sewer treatment plant that there's some areas that have that are no infiltration issues, broken pipes, uh, manholes that when the flood water comes in. So they've agreed to resolve some of those issues. So when they're all said and done, our I and I should actually be less than it is now. How many gallons a day is Eagle Bay going to put in there? Dave, do you remember that off the top? No, 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 I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I looked up everything today except that. Let me uh, see if I can grab it. Well, how many units do you have, Dave? That's easy. I'll just do a quick count. 264. 264. 264 and a little commercial. If you look at the EIS, I, I think for the DEIS, page 181, Shows a total of sixty thousand two hundred and thirty. Okay. With the residential, office, commercial, pool, boat slips, everything. Yep. Thank you. So, if, if I understand it correctly, 
will just be under the maximum capability capacity. Well, if if the the anticipated improvements in the collection system that that they've agreed to do succeeds in eliminating the the extraneous flow, then we'll actually be going. We'll start from a lower base. Okay. Right. We'll have more capacity. If if that indeed does. It's what it's intended to do. Now, kind of off on a little bit of a tangent, does that take into account the added contribution from Baymar, which has been vacant for years? Now it's going to have a hundred and some odd more units. So with Baymar and Eagle Bay, where does that put us? Yeah, again, that's capacity? why. Again, on paper, it looks fine. Uh, we're still under capacity. Um, mm -hmm. But again, the, the town is looking to expand the plant. So between right. these two, if we get over 80%, then we can pursue expanding the plant, which is the ultimate okay. goal. Then we'll get the approvals for that. Right. Yep. Well, if, we, if we're at 800,000 gallons a day now, and we're adding 60,000 for Eagle Bay, we're, within the 80, we're over 80%. My, unless my numbers are wrong. Well, yeah. it all depends on, on what they take out of well, the system true. with the remediation. I, I, I find that a couple of, uh, just my personal opinion, I, I believe that Dave said there was about three areas where uh, they found breaks along Tompkins or whatever, Hunter Place. Right. I, I find it hard to believe it's going to, we'll lose the 60,000 gallons from a couple no, of weeks. But, uh, well, no, but again, your plan is designed for one million. Right. So. To even approach asking the DEC for an expansion, we have to at least be over 80. So with this project and hopefully Baymar, we get over the 80%, then we can actually pursue expanding the plant, which is what the town board is looking for. Okay. Okay. And, and realize that's probably five years from now. Yeah. At least. Hope I'm alive in five years. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we are. You can cut the ribbon to the new plant. Okay. And, and you said that the, the applicant and the town have been in discussions about, you know, divvying up the costs for improvements. So they, the, uh, Correct. There's the memorandum of understanding is in the works at this point. Yeah, actually, Dave um, just uh, emailed me the other day, put together with Steve and finalized the Esplanade agreement and the sewer contribution agreement. Right. I know that. All right. So we're, we're are we are we satisfied with the explanation and the numbers we're looking at around the board members? Anyone have yeah. any questions on that? Yeah. I know just you had just comes up. It'll it'll come up at the site plan. Right. Just as just as an aside, um, where are we with the CX uh, CSX railroad uh, uh, study? You know, with have they agreed to a permit or probably not yet? But is that no. Room? We that can't. Works? No. Uh, yes and no. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, that's the what same. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing as uh, your day law. Uh, we cannot apply for a permit with them until we have a site plan approval. Okay. But we have discussions with them, and actually, uh, next Tuesday, I think it's next Tuesday, we're going out to do test holes on uh, both sides of the railroad to find out where the sewer is and where the water is. And that's required by Suez. And once we figure that out in the depth, we can finish the plans. And then Suez would uh, uh, file for a permit. The, the permit must be filed by the owner of the utility. So Suez would file for a permit to do the water line through there. And Stony Point would file for a permit for the replacement of the sewer through that trestle. Uh, both projects would be uh, you know, on the burden of the applicant. Yeah, and to follow up with that, actually, the test pits are next Thursday. It is um, Thursday? Yeah. Sorry. And, and the, uh, I believe the town has made the initial application to CX. Um, okay. Requesting that because we have an existing sewer there now. Um, so it's basically just a replacement of that existing sewer. Um, All right. So um, okay. the, the applicant actually put the initial application in. The town signed it and did submit it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I, Mark, you had one more comma the I-12. I don't. I don't think it's really at this point. It's, it had to do with the ferry and the boat docks. Yeah, I, I don't think that's 
I think that can be addressed at the site plan. Right. Exactly. So, so let me ask the board this. Uh, are we satisfied to uh, pass this finding statement that adopted at this time uh, on conditions of some of the modica modifications we've addressed? Yes. Yeah, I think so. so I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the finding statement. I'll second, second that. Uh, Mary, would you, uh, just to make it clear again for the record, we're going to adopt this after a roll call with the two statements that have been uh, changed in G5. Who's first? Excuse me? Who is first? You can go with me. And who is second? Gary. Who? I think that was. I Jerry? Guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Give me one second. Just give me one second. For the record, I want to just make sure. With the uh, verbiage change of uh, G2 and G6, as, as discussed. Okay? We're not going to have Steve read the whole thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> John. <laughs> Who's serving <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> After I got the uh, all the resolutions today, I was going to a letter of resignation was coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have okay, one. roll call. Mr. Crace. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Jaslow. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Alessi. You know what? I actually just I have one question. So, Gene, you just mentioned we're approving it with the modifications to G six and G two. I, I thought where we were ending up was on G2, we were okay. No. no. It's gonna, it's gonna go to the second. It's, it's almost a play on words, but it's more, it's, am I, am I correct on that, fellas? Ladies and gentlemen, that we're changing that to the second? I, I, I think that, um, I understand your point. It, it, it is a little bit of semantics, but if you're more comfortable changing third to second, um, I don't think my client has a problem with that. The, the, the CFO is issued after completion of the building, right? Correct. The, exactly. building, the building permit is issued before the construction. Right. The so you could say like before the building permit on the third or after, yeah. you know, on the second. And it was the same okay. thing. It's you put it to second and we, we know you're going to get the, the building permit for the third. I agree. Right? All right, with that, Dave. Sure. Okay, do you understand that, Carrie? Yep, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Miss Alessi. Okay, this is Alessi. Yes. Okay, Mr. Ferguson. Uh-oh. Mike. Uh, look, he's on mute. Hold on a second. Uh, I think he temporarily. It's going right to voicemail. Let me text him. While you're doing that, a couple of people at the bottom of my screen had some questions, and I think most of them were were just answered to the public. So those of you who did, fine. If not, you can get in touch with me. Had to do with who's going to pay for what and how many gallons, which we reiterated. I texted him and called both numbers. Well, uh, you, you, he could have stayed. Well, yeah, we have a majority, don't we? We have one, yeah. two, three, four, five. We have five. Yeah. So, you know, listen, this is Zoom. Sometimes there is a glitch, but we do have a majority, so that's adopted. Okay. Right. Got it. Well, thank you, applicant, for coming in and helping us out with this. Thank you for having us. Thank you. 
Okay. All right, I have one more thing on the agenda. The minutes of January 7th, 2021 planning board meeting. We'll make a motion to accept that, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I'll second, second that. All in favor, just to vote. Aye. 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 Okay, I'll get back to that last person who just called me. Uh, hearing that, uh, our meeting is over. I want to thank everybody for putting up with me. We're not going to do this too often. Yeah, I think you should uh, vote to uh, uh, adjourn the meeting. Okay, let's make a vote to adjourn. I'll make, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Set. All in favor? Who second? Aye. Mark. Aye. I seconded Mary. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank good you. Night. Stay warm. It's going to get cold. Thank you.